Hello guys, Colonel Ninny here. The purpose of this video is to introduce new players to the IL-2 Flying Circus Flight Sim. So today we're just going to familiarize you with the basics of engine starting, taxing the aircraft on the ground, and takeoff. As you get better at flying these aircraft, you'll find that using the keyboard to uh, fly it uh, will be quite challenging. So I would recommend a cheap flight controller like a uh, Logitech Wingman or a TS-16000, uh, something like that. So the first screen you'll come to is this one here. It lists all the different DLCs that you might have and there's you with Flying Circus. Here's me with my name registered on the forum, otherwise you'll be given an automatic name of player12345. First thing to do is to go into settings and look at key mapping and that'll tell you all the different controls that you should set up so you can fly the game. For people keen on single player stuff, the scripted campaigns and a pilot career. IL-2 provides one of the best multiplayer immersions of any flight sim. Uh, I would highly recommend you head in that direction once you get good at what you're doing. So let's jump in here and learn how to start, taxi and fly the aircraft. The first uh, quick mission screen you'll get to is this one here, which gives you either the Arras or Western Front maps and for the rest of the IL-2 World War II stuff, there's all the other maps. So we'll start off on this one here, which is the Arras map. Clicking on the airfield brings up this uh, display here, which gives us a choice of the different sides we can fly on. These two are World War II, these two are World War I. So for the Entente, is the uh, French and the Belgian and the uh, British and everybody else against the uh, Germans and Austrians here. So we're going to fly this uh, simple airplane here, the FALS D3A. So we click on that and then go to the wrench that's over here and that'll give us the different settings for the aircraft itself. Here we can choose the fuel. This only takes 50 liters. I usually like to do half. We could choose the different settings here. We're going to leave all those alone because it's going to be too complicated otherwise. We'll choose different paint schemes, and I've chosen this one here. Accept, and then start. The next map uh, brings us here. We've got the mission itself, and then the specifications for the actual aircraft gives you all the details if you're interested. Otherwise, we can close it, and when we start, we'll start on the airfield. The first thing you'll notice is how few instruments there are in this aircraft and actually that's the reason I've chosen it to uh, learn to teach you to fly in it because we want to look outside and that's where our references are and that's of course where the enemy is. Alright, let's have a look and see what we've got here. Right in the middle here we have the RPM gauge, to the left of that is the benzene which is the fuel gauge got a clock and they've got a couple of other switches and a compass and that's it. On the left are the two starting units. Starting is very easy. It's the E button and that'll put the magnetos up, wind it up and she starts just like that. The throttle control is the left hand side of the stick which I'll move here. It's basically a motorcycle grip where it says ALF. You can see it twisting twist it up and the RPM goes up. Okay and that's basically it. So the only other engine controls we have to know about are opening and closing the um, oil cooler which is this lever to the right here. That's fully open, fully closed. Pretty Mickey Mouse but that's it. It's very handy to be able to film yourself while you're taxiing and flying around and see how well you do. So the uh, default for that is, I believe, left control R, and that will give you a, an icon in the top right hand corner of your screen says that the camera is on. Now remember there are no brakes on this aircraft, and you have to control it by using the rudder. 
When we turn the rudder to the right, you can see the pedals on the floor and to the left. So when we turn to the right, it's going to try to turn the aircraft to the right. When we turn to the left, it's going to try to turn the aircraft to the left. As we add the power, if we don't do anything at all, the way the slipstream works, it's going to pull the nose to the left. So we have to control that by using the right rudder. And it's very, very twitchy. And it slow down. We don't have any brakes. Now, if we're going to try to uh, turn, it's going to want to turn to the left. So if we add power and give it some left rudder, it's going to want to turn left quite easily. Right. So this is how you taxi full left rudder. If you want to turn to the right, it's going to take a little bit more effort. It doesn't want to go that way. And it'll take a little uh, longer to get around. Okay. All right. Alright, so now the takeoff sequence. We're going to try and keep it straight by using the rudder as we add the power. So as we add the power, I'm going to add a little bit of right rudder. And as we go a little bit faster, you feel it starts to get light. So then tip forward on the nose just a little bit until you can see just over the nose. And then just hold the nose up slightly, and we're airborne. There's no gear to worry about, no flaps, nothing else. So this is a third-person view of what you saw of us doing in the first person. Notice the rudder here and see how it controls the direction of the aircraft. You can see by holding full left rudder, we can make a very tight turning circle. And when we apply full right rudder and add the power, we'll turn to the right, but it won't be quite as tight a circle because the airplane doesn't want to go that way. In the takeoff sequence, watch how I control the aircraft with the use of the rudder. Remember, it's right rudder to hold it straight, and as we pick up speed, we'll sort of center it a little bit better. This is the first in the series for uh, Flying Circus How to Fly videos. We'll take a look at uh, airspeed control, climbing, descending, and turns on the next one. If you've enjoyed this video and get some value out of it, please leave a comment and uh, subscribe and like and all those usual things. But if you want to see more of these videos, specifically with the IL-2 uh, Battle of Stalingrad, got about 150 training videos for you to look at. Thanks for watching guys. Cheers.